There's the foundation of a hip hinge, which is the foundation of lifting something. So it is the best way for you to get hip hinging without load. So if someone's got a back pain, they don't like doing this position, and they can't hip hinge yet, there's no way you're gonna get them doing that. The bridge is your first entry point into that. Some people with SIJ problems can't even do a glute bridge. So if you look at that A, you look at A there, what's the strength and conditioning progression from that? What will be the next step in their gym routine? Barbell hip thrusts. So this is getting them towards a barbell hip thrust, which is, you know, where athletes who are trying to get very strong posterior train and very big glutes, one of the barbell hip thrusts, which is Brett Contreras does, it's his little key movement, is one of the best ways of doing that. You've got to make sure that they can do all the progressions before that if you're dealing with someone with pain or injury. Okay, not just going straight into a loaded bar of thrust, hoping that if I fire their glutes up and get them strong glutes, it'll take away their back pain. Okay, but that's where you can progress too. So, bridging. Cues on this, here's your cues. What I would do for them, yes, they need to find their neutral spine, and they do need a lot of education about, I am pivoting here, I am not bending here. Because this is not an articulated Pilates roll bridge, okay? That is for doing, that is fine doing articulated bridge, but it does not teach me how to stabilize and bear load in a squat or a hip hinge or deadlift. Because I don't do this movement in a squat or a deadlift or I stabilize. So from this point here, they've already got a recruit here. This has got to stay flat. The best advice I can give people, instead of raising your hips, I want you to push down through your heels and push the ground down and you'll raise through there. Now when they get about halfway-ish, if they can then clench their butt cheeks to finish off the hip extension. So when they arrive in this point here, they're not in back extension. Their back extensors are on because they are stabilizing through. They're using all this to stabilize. And then you've got to watch their form. Are they in extension? Are they in infection? How many times have you had people do bridges and they go, that hurts my back? Because they're probably jamming into extension because they're letting that neutral go and they jam and they push themselves into lumbar spine extension and if they're stiff or they've got sensitivity through that lumbar spine into extension it's going to hurt them. If they get their glute bridge right they get their glutes firing they can stabilize their pelvis into neutral they can switch on their core they might do some core work some lumbar spine stuff to be able to even do this then I know when they go and hit which they know they've got that mechanic correct. There's no point in them trying to learn how to deadlift if they're all over the shop and their glutes aren't working in their spinal, they can't maintain spinal neutral. It's too hard. This is too hard a technical exercise to do, to teach, if they don't have the ground base work of this. And you're trying to ingrain the good pattern of movement in an unloaded back position, so when they go to that, they've got that memory and that reinforcement, all those repetitions they've done when they're doing that boring stuff, glute bridge with you, that they do the movement correctly. And then they develop strength in their motor patterns from that.